Hi, this is Richard Wright. I'm a software engineer at Lunar G, and I'm here to introduce the newly redesigned Vulkan Configurator. So what is the Vulkan Configurator, and why should you care? It's a really powerful tool that can manage your system's Vulkan implicit layer configuration. Vulkan layers are a powerful and flexible feature of Vulkan, with some providing validation services or extended features for your applications. Some layers are also an integral part of your graphics hardware's Vulkan driver package. Vulkan Configurator will discover all the layers you have installed on your system and will allow you to select any number of them to be loaded automatically by Vulkan applications on your computer. This overrides the normal loader behavior and gives you more control over the layers that are loaded with your programs. This means you can turn layers on and off and examine their output without having to recompile yours or even someone else's Vulkan code. This is really useful for all kinds of runtime diagnostics, catching Vulkan errors early and sometimes just figuring out why your Vulkan code is not behaving the way you're expecting it to. Okay, so enough slides. Let's dive in for an actual demonstration. The new Vulkan configurator is available right from the Windows Start menu when you've installed the Lunar G Vulkan SDK. It's a single window that has everything you need up front. Let's resize it a little bit here, give ourselves a little more room for our demo, and we'll get going. So. On startup, the Vulkan Configurator searches for all the layers installed on your computer. It sets up the initial set of layer configurations, and if any configurations don't have the layers required to support them, they will be disabled. It also searches for the VK Cube sample from the SDK and automatically adds that to the application launcher as a usable demonstration of using VK Config. With the API dump selected, we can launch it right from the launcher and we can see output from the API dump going straight to our log window. By default, all Vulkan applications on your system will be affected by these overrides as long as the Vulkan configurator is running. You do have the option to leave the configuration active after Vulkan configurator closes. You can also apply them only to a list of particular applications, for example VKCube here. This is nice because, say in the middle of working, you need a break and you want to go play VK Doom. You don't need to worry about the layer overrides being impacting the performance of your game. You can also just simply disable all of the overrides and leave the application completely in control of the layers that it wants to load. Each configuration consists of one or more Vulkan layers, and some of these layers may have their own individual settings that you may want to edit. These settings are saved as part of the configuration, and configurations that use the same layer can be set up in different ways. A good example are these validation configurations, which all use the Kronos validation layer. Each one, though, has different settings applied to do different types of validation. Not only can you edit the layer settings, you can also add and remove layers from any given configuration, or even make your own. Let's make our own to demonstrate. Just right click select new and I have a new layer configuration. I'm going to call it Wizbang. And we have a list of all the layers that are detected on our system here. Now by default all the layers are application controlled which means that the application can decide whether or not it wants to load the layer. But you can override that by forcing a layer on or actually you can also force a layer off. Layers that are forced off, the, lower, the loader will disable. So even if the application tries to load that layer, it will, not, uh, it will not succeed. Now for our demo, I want to use the Kronos validation layer and the monitor layer at the same time. So I'll select both of those to forced on. The monitor layer gives me a frame rate and the Kronos validation layer uh, does all sorts of types of validation. Uh, now, one thing before I go back and, and demonstrate this, if you have your own, your own custom layers or a third-party layer, you can also add that. Uh, you can add a custom layer path and select the, the folders, one or more folders that have your own custom layers in them, and they will be added uh, to this list that you can use. Uh, the old VK config did not allow this. If you use custom layer paths, you could only use those layers. Uh, now we can mix and match any way we want. Any layer that's on your system can be configured to be used uh, no matter where they're located. We're not going to use the Wizbang layer though, but I am going to use the Wizbang configuration. So let's save that. Go down and find it. There it is. And we can launch VK Cube. And it's using the Kronos validation layer. And it's also using the monitor layer. We can see the frame rate there. 
Now the Kronos validation layer didn't really do anything out here. Let's select that layer. By the way, there's the, there's the monitor layer. It has no settings. Kronos validation layer. There are a number of validation presets that we can set. I'm going to select best practices. So let me know about any best practices uh, that I'm violating in the VK Cube program. And now when I launch it, let's just stop it so it's not d dinging. We get some, you know, we get some interesting output, some tips about how we might how we might tune up our Vulkan program. Actually, we got quite a few tips there. Quite useful. Another new feature making its debut is VUID filtering. This capability is part of the Kronos validation layer and allows you to mute any layer output based on a message's VUID. Now this is similar to like when you're building a large project. I was on a, uh, a large project once that had 111,000 compiler warnings. As you can imagine, finding the useful warnings in that mess uh, was, was pretty difficult. And by the same token, if you get too much output from your validation layers, some of these things you may know about and you may willfully be willing to forgive and let go. And so the VUID filtering allows you to clean that up. Now, instead of demonstrating this on, the, on a cube, let's, um, let's do something a little different. Let's add to our launching list a more impressive uh, Vulkan demonstration that I've been working on for uh, weeks and weeks and we well, months now. I've been working on this very sophisticated Vulkan demo that I think you'll be very impressed with. And um, I've got it down to where I'm getting very few validation errors uh, or warnings. And, um, and so this is a good place to, to demonstrate that. So I've added it to my application launcher and I'm gonna just select the application so it's ready to go. And I'm just gonna choose standard validation. Let me know if there's anything that I'm doing wrong that I should know about. And I hope you're ready for this amazing demo. Here we go. Yep, there it is. It is an amazing Vulcan textured sphere. It's the moon, by the way. I don't know what could possibly have inspired uh, that selection. Uh, but I do get, uh, you know, despite my best efforts, I'm still getting something down here uh, with standard validation. It's saying that I'm using an extension uh, that I shouldn't be using. And what I did in here is I just, in my Vulkan init instance, I just said enumerate all the extensions and enable all of them. And that's because I'm so smart and I know that I'm going to need all of them at one point in time, right? Well, okay, just kidding, but it's a good example. Uh, sometimes there is a warning that you know about that uh, okay, just let that go, and, and, and I, I want to only know about something that's new that I'm already not aware of. So we can actually add this VUID message. I'm just going to highlight it right here, or the first part of it, and I can just copy it right over here into our mute message VUIDs thing. And, and look, as you type this, by the way, let me back this all the way up. As you type this, it has all of the VUIDs in it, uh, so it's pretty handy. If you know the message, if you know the exact message number, sometimes it can find it based on that. So there's my message ID. I say I don't care about that. So I'll just terminate and relaunch my amazing program again. And now I get a nice clean output. And so now I'm working on this the rest of the day, and suddenly I can see, uh, you know, some some output here. I know that I've I've tripped over something, and I need to address that. So there you go. We really just started over from scratch for vkconfig. We've made the interface easier and more intuitive and added some very powerful and time-saving features along the way. We think it's going to save you a lot of time and be a great resource for your Vulkan projects. So what's next? Well, it's already an invaluable and easy to use tool for managing your Vulkan override layers and for diagnosing Vulkan coding and runtime issues. But we really want to expand this with better integration and support for third-party tools and layers as well. We want it to become a central tool for developing Vulkan apps by making layer management much easier. And if you're developing custom layers, we want this to be a great way to expose that layer's features and capabilities to other developers. So let us know what you think, or if you have some suggestions for future releases, the best way to do so is via our GitHub repository using the link shown here. And thank you for your time.